turbinado sugar, sugar cubes, powdered sugar, and different kinds of sugar syrups. Brown sugar, both light and dark, is actually white sugar onto which a small amount of molasses is sprayed. Sugar in both solid and liquid forms is shipped from the refinery in packages that range in size from teaspoon to truckload. All sugars belong to a class of organic substances called carbohydrates, which are composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Throughout this report, we will be using the word sugar. It is a common name for a wide variety of sweeteners. It's used, for instance, to refer to the natural sweeteners found in milk and fruit. But for purposes of clarity, when we or the people we talk with use the word sugar, it means the refined and processed sugars that are added to our foods. Some of these sugars are sucrose, dextrose, dextrin, fructose, maltose, invert sugar, corn sugar, corn syrup, corn sweetener, natural sweetener, honey, molasses, cane syrup, galactose, beet sugar, and maple syrup. Sucrose was the first and is still the primary sugar used by food manufacturers. But other sweeteners like corn syrup and fructose have also become major sweetening additives. The addition of fructose to processed foods is undesirable. There have not been enough metabolic studies that have carefully examined the metabolic effects of fructose, especially on humans. And the studies that have been done on experimental animals and humans have shown that fructose is much more lipogenic than is glucose. That is, fructose is a carbohydrate that is converted to fat much more easily than is a glucose-based carbohydrate, such as starch. Food companies add these sugars to their products for a variety of reasons. But the underlying motive seems to be a desire to create uniquely different foods that appeal to the consumer's appetite for sweet-tasting items. Catering to our sweet tooth creates a definite competitive edge for food processors. Uh, I think it's entirely possible that uh, food market analysts, uh, when comparing successful products with unsuccessful products, will discover that the slicker, the sweeter foods uh, seem to sell best relative to a certain amount of advertising. And once that discovery is made, obviously we'll begin to load up their particular product and with ever more slickness and ever more sugar. Virtually every product that's in a package contains at least one type of sweetener. And food manufacturers often use several different sugars in the same product. I think most people are aware now that sugar isn't good for you. The, the phrase empty calories seems to have caught on. And so there are people who will look at the ingredients of some products. And uh, they're listed, you know, in order of um, decreasing content. Uh, and if the sugar is way up there at the top, they may not buy the product. So what do the food companies do? They break down the sugar among several ingredients, any one of which may be in a modest amount. You know, they'll have, say, corn syrup uh, and then sugar. You put the two together, it would be ingredient number one. But you apportion the amount of sugar between, you know, cane sugar and corn syrup, uh, and maybe both ingredients are number five or number six. I'm not really too sure of what's in things, quite honestly. You know, I don't, I don't look. I, if it tastes good to me, I eat it. 200 years ago, the average American ate about four pounds of sugar a year. This year, we can each expect to consume, on the average, over 129 pounds of sugar. That's right, 129 pounds in a year, five and a half ounces every day. This huge increase in sugar consumption is the most sudden and drastic change man has made in his eating habits in all his 50 million years of existence. Some Americans will consume less than 129 pounds, and some more. But most of us really don't know how much sugar we eat. No, I don't believe I eat 120 pounds of sugar. Mm -mm. Maybe 50, and that's top, I'd say. I don't know. I don't know how much I eat. I mean, I do it by the teaspoons or the tablespoons or whatever. It isn't the teaspoons, tablespoons, or cups of sugar we use at home that determines how much we consume. 
75% of the sugar we eat is already in the prepared and packaged foods and beverages we buy, or in restaurant and fast food meals. So it's easy to see why we can't keep track of our sugar ingestion. It's virtually invisible. Of the 11,000 different food items available in supermarkets, very few are sugar-free. In fact, sugar is the largest single ingredient in the American diet. And we find sugar in all places, that, all kinds of places where you'd never expect to find it, like high concentrations of sugar, up to 30% in some salad dressings. I mean, who says your lettuce should taste sweet? I don't think people purchase ketchup because they want sugar. Uh, but the food industry has discovered that they can sell more ketchup if they spike it with sugar. And so inadvertently, uh, you are making ever greater purchases of sugar, despite your own intentions. One of the things that all of these boxes have in, in, in common, the cereals in these boxes or the product in these boxes, is that they have more sugar in them than anything else. Lucky Charms, for example, is 50.4% sugar. Um, Cocoa Pebbles is 53.5% sugar. Um, Apple Jacks is 55% sugar. And, and uh, Sugar Smacks, 61.3% sugar. When you eat two ounces of one of these sugared breakfast products, you're getting more than one ounce of sugar for every ounce of wheat or corn. Let's look at how much sugar some other popular food products contain. A Hershey chocolate bar is more than half sugar. 51% sugar by weight. Hamburger Helper, 23% sugar. Cherry flavored Jello, 82% sugar. Shake and Bake, barbecue style, 50% sugar. Wishbone Russian Dressing, 30% sugar. Heinz Tomato Ketchup, 29% sugar. Quaker 100% natural cereal, 24% sugar. Coffee Mate non-dairy creamer, 65% sugar. Chocolate ice cream, 21% sugar. General Mills breakfast squares, 40%. Vicks medicated throat lozenges, 66% sugar. Twinkies, 32%. Chewable vitamins, 44% sugar. That's right, chewable vitamins, 44% sugar. Another way of measuring the sugar content of a product is to determine how many teaspoons of sugar it contains. How many teaspoons of sugar would you say there are in this piece of apple pie? Seven. Besides these items, you can also find sugar in canned corned beef hash, pork sausage links, canned and packaged puddings, many baby foods, frozen TV dinners, fruit-flavored yogurt, hot dogs, mustard, sugar-cured meats like bacon and ham, soy sauce, most canned fruits, some canned vegetables, baked beans, and cigarettes. Cigarettes? Yes? The sugar is added to air-cured tobacco during the blending process. All this sugar presents real problems for people who, for medical or other reasons, are on special diets. The worst part about this whole diet was the shopping part of it, because I couldn't eat what I used to eat. So I'd go in a grocery store and just get lost. I walked down the aisles of it, and I couldn't buy anything in any of the aisles most of the time, because everything in there had sugar in it. One more word before we leave the subject, or two words, actually. Soft drinks. Soft drink makers are the largest industrial users of sugar. Coca-Cola, for example, uses two billion pounds of it each year. And every year, Americans, on the average, consume over 500 eight-ounce servings of soft drinks. That's better than 30 gallons per year per person. I would think soft drinks would probably be one of the worst. First of all, they are the most prevalent source of, of, of sugar. Second, they're taken as snacks usually when there's no other food in the digestive system or very little food in the digestive system. That means they gain access to the blood very quickly. Now you can see how it's possible to eat so much 